In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace and peace be with you. Welcome everyone again to our church here, St. Germans, as we gather to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. We hear in our Gospel about Jesus teaching Philip and Thomas, teaching them about how he is the way, the truth and the life, teaching them also about the closeness between him and his Father in heaven. And that same Father in heaven is close to us now as we celebrate Easter, as we celebrate again still the joy of the risen Christ who is with us in the midst of this coronavirus crisis when we are all absent from this building which we long to be in. But as we begin our celebration, as we begin our prayer and worship this day, we ask God to continue that ministry of presence where he heals us, where he forgives us, where he makes his closeness known. Our response is prayer to the Father. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness. And your spirit draw us to that love, shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together in the great hymn to the Trinity. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. In the glory of God, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to God's Word. The first reading is a reading from the Book of Acts. About this time, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews. In the daily distribution, their own widows were being overlooked. So the Twelve called a full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of God so as to give out food. You brothers must select from among yourselves seven men of good reputation, filled with the spirit and with wisdom. 
we will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the word. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and elected Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas and Nicolaus of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles who prayed and led their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased and a large group of priests made their submission to the faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The response is, may your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Ring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp, with a ten-stringed lute sing him songs. May, May your love, love be upon, upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. For the word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. May your, May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. May, May your love, love be upon, upon us, O Lord, Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of Peter. The Lord is the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. Set yourselves close to him so that you too, the holy priesthood that offers the spiritual sacrifices which Jesus Christ has made acceptable to God, may be like living stones making a spiritual house. As scripture says, see how I lay in Zion a precious cornerstone that I have chosen and the man who rests his trust on it will not be disappointed. That means that for you who are believers, it is precious. But for unbelievers, the stone rejected by the builders has proved to be the keystone. A stone to stumble over, a rock to bring men down. They stumble over it because they do not believe in the word. It was the fate in store for them. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of God who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And after I've gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, 
so that where I am, you also may be. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father too. From this moment, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the Father and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, said Jesus to him. And you still do not know me. To have seen me is to have seen the Father, so how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work, if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works, because I am going to the Father. This is the Gospel. Of the Lord. Alleluia. 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 There is that lovely line in uh, the Gospel where Philip says to Jesus, show us the Father and then we will be satisfied. And again, to misquote the great evangelist, the Rolling Stone, sometimes it's very hard to get satisfaction if we pursue this desire to see the Father. We don't really have a particular feast day or a time in the church in which we celebrate the great feast of the Father because the Father is behind much of our worship. And so to see the Father with our physical human eyes really defeats the purpose because we see the Father in, through and with Jesus, as he himself says, I am the way, the truth and the life. But it's the way to the Father. But also, uh, we see it through the work of the Spirit. We see it in the faith that we have. We see it in the blessing that we do. We see it in the prayers that we raise up, especially in the, that great prayer of Christians, the Lord's Prayer, our Father. But as we reflect on where we currently are uh, in this coronavirus, and each of us will have different emotions, different encounters so far. Some might be, like Philip, not quite satisfied with how things are going or frustrated that what we want to have happen, we really can't get it. We can't get satisfaction in the midst of social isolation. Perhaps many of us are frustrated that holidays have been cancelled. We can't visit friends, relatives, people we rely on, or we can't do the normal things that we would love to do in good weather, even though tomorrow uh, uh, the, in Wales our restrictions will be ever so slightly lifted and we can uh, exercise more than once a day. But some of us are actually perhaps enjoying this time, this time of social isolation and not finding it difficult, and quite enjoying being with family or simply being on our own to read, to have peace and quiet. Each of us in a different way are coming to terms with this time, either as gift or as, as malign presence perhaps. But I want to go back to the start of that gospel reading and 
uh, for those of us involved in this ministry of ours, uh, we use that reading from the beginning of John's 14th chapter, where Jesus says to his disciples, let not your hearts be troubled, but to trust, to trust in God, trust also in me. We, we know these words as preachers, as ministers of funerals and ministering to the bereaved because it is probably the reading that is used more often than not during funeral services. And again, uh, it is a, a, a sad reality of this crisis that even though we might be socially isolated or shielded, there are many, many families in our country. Uh, 30,000 people have died, perhaps who shouldn't have died uh, because of this virus for whom these words will, may, well, could perhaps have been said. Although earlier in the week just past, I, I presided at a funeral in Thornhill where there was one person present. And so we take comfort from the words, if we can. Let not your hearts be troubled, but to trust in God, trust also in me. Even our first reading is also uh, uh, an encouragement for us to have faith when times get difficult. In this case, it, it was about arguments within church. Imagine that, arguments between different factions in a church setting. In this case, Hebrews uh, versus the Hellenists, the Jews versus the Greek Christians, and over an issue of who cares for the widows. And so the solution of the early church was, okay, well, we need someone dedicated to this ministry. We need special key workers who will get involved and look after all of the widows. Again, that ministry of deacon very often is celebrated in liturgically with special vestments. And we are hoping to celebrate, we don't know when, the diaconate, the ordination of Geraint, uh, to the diaconate uh, later this year in our own cathedral, celebrating his call, along with the other deacons, to a life of practical service where we help physically and practically and pastorally those in need. But again, this is an encouragement of faith, to trust that it is God that is calling. It is the Father who calls uh, people to give of time, to give of energy, to work, and by so working and walking and practicing faith, making the presence of the Father visible. Jesus says at the end of his gospel, at the end of this gospel passage, if you don't believe the words that I say, believe the work that I do, and in the work that I do, you will see the work of the Father. But also, if you believe, you will do that same work, an even greater work than this. And for those of us who are holding strongly to our faith, are longing for an increase in faith, our invitation in Easter and in a, in a crisis like this is to see in our efforts of holding on keeping the faith alive in our homes, with our families, with our friends, in the phone calls that we make, in the Zoom meetings that we attend, or perhaps even in the quiet walk in the morning or evening, when we look around and admire the beauty of spring. These works behind lies faith, faith that we walk not alone, but in the company, in the presence, in the gift and the blessing of God our Father. And so we come to stand together, if you can, or perhaps sitting or lying or in the garden, wherever you might be, to profess our common faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of intercession today are read for us by Gerwin. In the faith of Christ, let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we have become your people by grace, make us worthy of our calling. Lead your church to follow your Son Jesus in all things as the way, the truth and the life. Strengthen your church in the desire for true fellowship. And we pray for June, our bishop, for Phelim, our parish priest, and for all who minister to us. In our diocese, we pray today especially for the work and for the people of the parish of Camavan, praying for Elaine, their parish priest, and all who minister there. We pray also in the worldwide church for the Anglican Church in Kenya. Lord, make us one in heart and mind, so that we may share the riches of your grace with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This week we pray especially for the work of Christian aid and for all who work to provide aid in the name of Christ. Almighty God, who by the word became flesh, give inherent dignity to all of humanity by your grace. May we recognise your presence and the incredible privilege of encountering your image in one another. Grant, Lord, that by your inspiration, we may all work continually to challenge anything that dehumanises another and to amplify the worth and value of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope and love, you made the world and care for all creation, but the world feels a strange place at this time. The news is full of stories about coronavirus. Some of us are worried that we may get ill. Others are anxious and worried for their family and for their friends. Be with us all and help us to find peace. We pray also for our key workers, for all who are working for our good. We pray for all doctors and nurses and scientists and all who are working to discover the right medicines to help those who are ill. We give you thanks, Lord, that even in these anxious times, you are with us and you are sustaining us. Help us to put our trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spread your healing presence, Lord, in a world where many cannot bear to hear the truth. Give grace and power 
to those who seek to do great works in the name of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, use us as living stones to build a community in your name. Although that community may now feel dispersed, keep us, our families and our friends in the true way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Soothe the hearts, Lords, of all who are troubled and guide the feet that do not know the way. Grant to all who suffer the vision of Christ risen and glorified at the right hand of the Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a moment of stillness, we offer our own petitions for those who may have asked for our prayers at this time for our family and our friends, and for ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died. May the Lord who has gone before us to prepare a place for us, receive the souls of the faithful and grant them the perfect knowledge of his love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples, I am with you always. Be with us today, Lord as we offer ourselves to you. Hear our prayers for others and for ourselves and keep us all in your care. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. And we share God's peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And wherever you are, from here, St. Germans, uh, we extend to you every spiritual blessing and the peace of God on you and on your homes. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. Because in his victory over death a new age has gone, the long reign of sin is ended, a broken world is being renewed, and we are once again made whole. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and glory, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise, and grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink from this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup your gifts to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. We thank thee, Father, for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son in this holy sacrament, through which we are assured of the hope of eternal life. We offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Keep us in the fellowship of his body, the Church, and send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Just before our final blessing, just a, a reminder of some of our notices. Again, they can be found uh, on the inside of our service uh, leaflet, or uh, not the service leaflet, inside of our newsletter online. If you'd like a paper copy, please let us know. We'll do our best to make sure you are sent one. Um, this coming week, we will have our Easter course, Why on Earth, by the Church Army taking place on Zoom on Wednesday, the, uh, this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock. To access this, you need to contact me by uh, message or email, and I'll give you the, the code of the meeting, the number of the meeting, and then the access code. Uh, uh, and uh, that starts at 7. You just simply log into Zoom. If you have the Zoom app application, download it to your device. Because we have Zoom, uh, we, have, we have subscribed to Zoom for the duration of this uh, crisis. Uh, we are also hoping to have uh, later in the month uh, a coffee morning, a Zoom coffee morning. Uh, and that will take place on Wednesday the 20th of May at 10.30 a.m. So uh, we'll see how many uh, will connect to that. Uh, so all you need is a coffee again, access to a video camera uh, or, uh, or, and uh, access also to the Zoom uh, programme. Uh, um, we have our ongoing uh, Lift Up Your Hearts page of spiritual support this week. It's by Paula Gooder. It's published by the Church Times and that can be downloaded or read online. We're also hoping that uh, money that has been donated uh, for Christian aid, and we, we started uh, with our Lent lunches, our soup lunches, uh, before the lockdown really took, took, it, uh, took place. We did manage to raise some money for Christian Aid, and so if you could start sending that in, uh, or either to Angela or the wardens, we'll make sure that uh, uh, one check is sent off from the parish uh, to Christian Aid from St. Germans. Um, we're also, a little bit of advance notice, next Sunday is the sixth Sunday of Easter. Our Easter season is almost coming to the end. But Easter, always, the season of Easter always ends really with a time of prayer. And over the last number of years, we have done a novena here in St. Germans and St. Saviour's uh, according to uh, the theme of Thy Kingdom Come. Uh, and this uh, is a worldwide initiative that involves evangelical Christians, uh, uh, Orthodox Christians, Catholic Christians of all kinds, uh, who come together to pray according to their own tradition uh, during the 10 or 9 days from the uh, Ascension Thursday up until Pentecost itself. So what we are going to do, again, putting, res putting resources online to help people pray during that time uh, for thy king kingdom come. Uh, the emphasis this year is on praying for evangelism. If you know someone who is struggling with loneliness, uh, we're also signed up as a support to the uh, yourneighbourhood.org but also if you know someone from our church community who is perhaps uh, feeling a little bit low let us know uh, and we'll do what we can to reach out and support as much as we can uh, our service will continue here uh, in st german uh, the online services will continue until uh, the law allows us to open for public worship again but also this during this celebration uh, after the final blessing uh, the, the final clip will be over uh, at the image already. It is the month of May, a time of devotion traditionally uh, to God through Mary. Um, and so we will sing as we normally do uh, in Easter, uh, the Regina Chain. The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which is beyond all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, Son, and the
As promised, uh, we conclude our service here on the fifth Sunday of Easter here in St. Germans with the light flooding through, through the building as we turn to the image of Our Lady uh, and we pray and sing uh, the Regina Cherry. Joy to thee, O Queen of Heaven. Joy to thee, O Queen of Heaven. Alleluia. He whom thou wast meet to bear. Alleluia. As he promised, as our is. Alleluia. Oh, for us to God thy prayer. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. Oh, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who by the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has brought joy to the world, grant, we beseech you, that through his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ our Lord. 